Today, I'm going to teach you Hammer in just 13 minutes. As always, let's begin with a quick history lesson. When it comes to the history of the hammer, we actually don't have much on it, despite how popular of a tool it is. However, the oldest known documentation of it is, of course, Thor's hammer. No, not that Thor. That Thor. Now, as cool as a mythological warlord that wields a hammer of lightning is, people wanted a bit more practical use for the hammer due to the rapidly decreasing need to smite an opposing army with a thunderous hammer. So in 2006, the birth of the modern hammer was made by Disney's newest and greatest adult show, Handy Mandy. However, people soon realized that liking nails was pretty weird, and so they opted back to the older and larger version of the hammer when designing both bars' weapons. And that concludes the full history of the hammer. Now it's time for the basic moveset. First, we have Neutral Light, which is a succession of two short-range kicks that bring your character forward slightly. This move isn't very good due to how punishable it is, and I would only recommend going for it when you're stacked with your opponent. Next is Side Light, which is a horizontal swing of the hammer on the ground. This move can virtually be a wall, as its hitbox can catch any opponent that's grounded near it, and even some that are in the air. This property makes it good for punishing some attacks that are usually difficult to punish, such as Gauntlet Side Light. The last of Hammer's ground moves is Downlight, which is a quick stomp on the ground that sends the opponent up upon connecting. This is Hammer's main combo starter, as practically all of Hammer's true combos and strings come from this move, but we'll get to that a bit later. Getting into the aerial moves, we first have Neutral Air, which is a vertical upward swing of the Hammer. This move is rather fast and has a good amount of force, making it good for juggling opponents in the air who are unable to land on the stage properly. Then we have Side Air, which is a horizontal swing just like Side Light, but with more range and much more force. This is the main kill move of Hammer, thanks to the true combo of Down Light into Side Air, but it's also a reliable source for killing on its own. Next is Down Air, which is almost like a downward scoop of the opponent that throws them upwards when connecting. Surprisingly, this move is slightly better at killing vertically than Neutral Air, making it a more desirable option. However, it can be much harder to hit compared to Neutral Air. Then we have Recovery, which is the exact opposite of Down Air. Instead of taking the opponent below you upward, it takes the opponent above you downward. As an actual recovery move, it's not the best, as the height increase you get is minimal and it doesn't last for long. However, its true power comes in the form of gimpy opponents that are off stage, but that's for another part of the video. To end off the moveset, we have Ground Pound, which is an absolute tank of a move. This ground pound is one of the most forceful in the game, leading to having an uncanny ability to gimp opponents. Not only this, but the hitbox is rather large, making it easier to cheesily clip your opponent when they're on the wall. Now that we've wrapped up the moveset, it's time to talk about the true combos. The first combo you want to know is D-Light Side Light. This is only true on lower damage, as eventually the D-Light will send too high for the side light to connect. The good news is that once you get your opponent to this point, you're perfectly set for another true combo, being D-Light Sair. As mentioned earlier, this is the main kill confirm of Hammer. This works at most health ranges beyond light yellow, and it's easy to hit consistently. The only issue you may encounter is when the D-Light hits too close or too far. It may allow your opponent to dodge out in time, making your placement of D-Lights very important. Speaking of which, if your D-Light does end up hitting too close, you can go for another true combo, D-Light Dare. There's two ways to input this combo. One way is when the opponent is stacked with you on the D-Light, in which you just have to do a jump and dare. Alternatively, if the D-Light hits too far, you could do a dash jump into a dare instead. Do keep in mind that the non-stacked version of this is only true up to a certain point. The stacked version will always be true, making it another kill confirm. There's two more true combos to talk about, but these are more niche. One of these is Gravity Cancel D-Light into Nair. This can be good if you catch your opponent high in the air with a GCD light to go for an early kill off the top, but this is rare and it's usually better to go for a more reliable kill confirm. The last one is even more niche, being in light into side light. The reason it's so obscure is because it's only true on low damage when using the current worst hammer legend, Cassidy. That being said, this is a good follow-up off in light for any hammer legend, it just won't be true. Now, if you know anything about Hammer, you know that there's one more true combo that I failed to mention. This is because I wanted to make an entire section for this. If you don't know, there's a move known as the Russian Mafia, which was a very popular kill confirm in the earlier days of Brawlhalla. The entire combo goes like this. D-Light, Jump and Chase Dodge, 
Recovery, Turnaround Dare. How this move came to possess the name of the Russian Mafia, I'll never know. What I do know is that although the Russian Mafia can no longer be hit as a true combo kill confirm, it's still a very useful trick. The recovery sets your opponent up to be hit by either Nair or Sair, depending on their health, and this allows you to either read a dodge for the follow-up or just go straight for the attack. Of course, the main and most important benefit of the Russian Mafia is that it looks dope as hell. Unfortunately, Brahala doesn't give out points for style, but hitting a cool clip sure helps with the dopamine levels. The Russian Mafia can also be performed off of a gravity cancelled D-Light, and I actually find it easier to input it this way because you don't have to worry about the jump before the chase dodge. Quick tip if you're having trouble inputting the moves. First, work on doing D-Light into jump chase dodge. Once you get comfortable inputting the jump and chase dodge quickly and close together, add the recovery. Now that we've gotten the basics out of the way, it's time to cover more specific things about Hammer, starting with offstage play. Hammer has one of, if not the strongest offstage kit out of any weapon in Brawlhalla. This is mainly thanks to one move, recovery. The ability to make any opponent that's above you suddenly get thrown below you is a trait only shared by Gauntlet's Nair, however, Hammer Recovery has much more force. Because of this, you want to get below your opponent off stage if possible. Of course, this can be risky depending on what resources they have left and what weapon they have, so honing your own resource management and being smart of when you attack is crucial. That being said, if you do manage to get underneath them and hit the recovery, this can lead to a devastating gimp. If you can't safely get below them, or don't feel confident, you could also opt to be beside them and use Sair and Nair. A well-timed Sair when you go to meet your opponent offstage can lead to a pretty early kill. If you're above your opponent or if they're touching the wall, you can always go for a ground pound. I wasn't lying earlier when I said the hitbox is large, and if your opponent tries to stay on the wall and try and let your ground pound slip by, they're likely in for a rude awakening. You do have Dare 2 of course, the only issue is that it throws them upwards rather than down. Despite how strong the offstage kit is, you don't always want to be throwing yourself into disadvantage to try and get a kill. This leads to edge guarding with Hammer. Truth be told, you don't have too many options. You could try and play a bit farther from the edge and wait to attack with either a side light or D light, or you could try and catch them with a well timed Sair. However, what I believe to be the best move you could do is a dash D light when your opponent's hurt box is near the top of the wall. When done correctly, this move will come out very quickly while giving your opponent no chance to react, and can allow you to pull off one of the kill confirms if they're in that range. If they get back to the stage, but they're still on the edge, you could do one of my favorite strings. D-Light, Side Light, and after walking off the edge, Recovery. Of course, this is only practical if they aren't in kill percentage, but it's a great follow-up due to many people's tendency to jump following the D-Light Side Light. You can even mix in a Sayer read afterwards to really solidify the disadvantage. Now, let's get into how you should be playing with the hammer. While hammer is strong in the areas that it covers, it does have some noticeable holes. On the ground, hammer can only cover stacked, close grounded, and to the side. It can be incredibly difficult to protect yourself from above, especially if you aren't playing a legend such as Sentinel whose Ensig covers that weakness. That being said, hammer's greatest tool is and always will be D-Light and its combos. With this in mind, you should be playing to that advantage by trying to hit your D-Lights when possible. As I said earlier, D-Light placement is a key element to playing Hammer correctly. To do this, you need to play closer to your opponent, especially when you're trying to put pressure on them. When you're in a situation where you can freely punish with anything, you'll likely want to go for a D-Light combo, provided you aren't looking for a signature kill. Of course, going for the D-Light isn't always going to be the best option due to how close you need to get to your opponent for it to connect. In these cases, you can always go with Side Light, Sair, and Nair. Now, what I've described is essentially neutral and punishing, but what about when they're up in the air and you're an advantage on stage? For these situations, Nair is going to be your best friend. If your opponent continuously falls back to the stage without using any options, you can juggle them in the air while building massive damage and potentially leading to a kill. If they use options while coming down, you could use Nair to add pressure to them due to it being virtually impossible for Nair to be punished from above. Lastly, what if you're the one in disadvantage? Dare is the only move that covers you from below, or at least practically speaking since ground pound can't be used in these scenarios. Even with Dare, your lower diagonals aren't covered which leaves you vulnerable for plenty of attacks. This further solidifies the need to be playing grounded with Hammer as to minimize the risk of ending up in these situations. The best thing you could try and do is land without attacking, 
Or if you must, you can use Nair, Ser, or Dare to cover yourself. Next, I want to get into the best Hammer Legends to pick up currently. It of course goes without saying that one of these legends is Taros. After an overwhelming presence in 2023 Brawlhalla Esports, it's widely accepted that Taros is one of the best legends right now. His high damage complements his two heavy weapons, especially since Axe is a top tier weapon. His signatures have always been broken and abusable, making him an ideal pick for 6 members. Not that I'm endorsing that playstyle, of course. Taros even has the best crossover skin, being Patrick. As much as I hate him, there's no denying that Taros is a great hammer legend to pick. Another really strong hammer legend is Sentinel, who if you haven't noticed is currently my main. When I first started playing Sentinel a few months back, he was on nobody's radar. Following BCX, people began to realize how broken he really is, but he's yet to see any real pro play as of late. Hammer and Guitars are a deadly combo, considering the only big weak point of Guitars is its inability to kill. This, combined with some crazy sigs and good stats, makes Sentinel another strong pick. The third and final Hammer Legend I'll talk about is Thor. While it's been a bit since he's been used in pro play, I think he's going to be seeing a resurgence soon enough. Orb has been power creeping for a long time, and it feels like it'll continue to do so. He's also got some strong hitting signatures that may feel a bit hard to use, but are rewarding to hit. Although I only mentioned 3 Hammer Legends, I personally don't think there's any Hammer Legends that are bad, so you should pick what you feel most comfortable with. The last thing I want to cover is the common mistakes of Hammer players. One mistake that I find myself doing even to this day is doing side lights where I should be doing D lights and vice versa. There have been too many times where I've thought the proper attack was a side light, but it ends up overswinging my opponent and leads to me getting punished. In general, you want to be using D light more often than side light, so if you feel like you could be doing either in a situation, it's probably best to go for a D light. Another big issue I see is the tendency for people to always try and cover their landings with Sair. While Sair is a good cover move, doing it every time will cause you to get punished more and more. Actually, this is a problem for all weapons, but it's a bit more problematic on Hammer due to this punishability. More often than not, it's best to land without using any attack to cover yourself. Just land, get your options back, and reset to neutral. The last common problem I see is players that try to get too stylish with Hammer. Listen, I completely understand that Hammer is fun to style with. That's why I think it's the most fun weapon in Brawlhalla to play. However, there are times where you might be getting too ambitious with your play. Maybe you're getting too risky off stage to try and get a gimp, or you threw away an opportunity to hit a kill confirm to try and hit a hard read for the clip. There's no problem with doing this if you're only playing for fun, but if you're trying to be serious and win, then don't get jiggy with it, as the kids say. It's better to not get a clip than to get clipped yourself. And that concludes my hammer guide. I'll be honest, I've only been playing Hammer for a short time, so if there's anything you feel I missed out on, then please let me know in the comments down below. But hopefully, you now have a better understanding of how to play the Hammer. And hopefully, you don't like nails.